Welcome to the Hidden Gems Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Jordan Richard. We got my co-host, Ray McCallum, a.k.a. Ray Mack. But today ain't about us, man. Let me throw the bombs in. Bro. We, got, we, got a, we, got a, we got a legend in the building. We got an OG in this game, man. Uh, Lorenzo Brown. You know, he's honestly, the reason why I know a lot of you guys are like, why you call him a legend is because he's one of the first, honestly, players that I've seen playing NBA has success in the D League, has success in the G League, has success in the CBA. So that's why we're gonna call him a legend in this game, man. Cause uh, there ain't too it, many, they ain't there ain't too many people that can do that. And as you can see in this world, there's been a lot of people that have tried and have not succeeded. Appreciate you being on the show with us. I appreciate you having me, man. That's love. I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. But you know, I'm I'm gonna let Ray uh take this one over because there's a reason why you know he was so high on you being on here too as well. You guys have a lot of history. I feel like we got to get right into that. Yeah, uh, honestly, man, Zo, appreciate you coming on. And uh, what's crazy is how small the hoop world is. Um, Zo and I've been honestly going at it since we was way way back in the day, little kids the back in the day. You know what I mean? And it and it's carry over even to now. Um, and you know what's crazy is. With training camp approaching, my first time was 2016, 17, so something like yeah. that. We uh we both had a fight for a, a spot in training camp in Detroit, uh, which Zo has been through that. He's been through that grind. This is my first time, and it's kind of crazy because I never experienced anything like that. And at the same time, like I'm I'm going against somebody that I was essentially cool with, you know. Um, but when you're on the court, you know you're trying to fight for that spot. And uh, it, it was kind of crazy. And I let Zoe kind of dive more into the situation. But, you know, we both trying to fight for this last spot to make the Pistons roster, being a point guard on the team, backup guard. Reggie Jackson ends up getting hurt. Um, and I, I'll never forget, it was like October 22nd. I think they had waved Zoe. And then I'm thinking I'm cool. I made the team. I'm back at the crib in Detroit. And then two days later, I get waved. And I find out on Twitter, uh, they waved me for Bano Udry. And I find on Twitter, team never said nothing to after I read it online. And they wanted more veteran experience. And I think when they had let Zoe go, they had said, I had more NBA experience at the time. And then even though we had the same amount of years in the league, and then they let me go two days later, the day before our first game. I'll never forget, Pistons were going to play at Toronto. And they signed Bano Udry. And um, ever since, bro, it's just like, kind of talk about that 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 grind. You you. You were second round pick by Minnesota in 2013. You know what I'm saying? Then you got to go to camp to to earn the roster. Uh, I think they might, yeah, got waived. Then you go to the D League. Then you sign with the Sixers your rookie season. Like, just kind of talk yeah. about that. Like, you, you've been experiencing that from the jump. Yeah, most definitely, man. You put the nail right on the coffin with that one, man. It's been a, a crazy grind. Um, like you said, I was a second round pick. Uh, had my opportunity with the Timberwolves, and you know when you're a second round pick, you don't necessarily make the team. It's still like a it's still a tryout. So I go in there, and um, you know I get waived and go right to the D League. And this is when it was the D League, not the G League. You feel me? So I was in uh, Massachusetts. I forget the team name, uh, but I had I had a Springfield. Springfield. Yeah, Springfield. Yeah. yeah, I was in Springfield and. That's, they don't have, have a team anymore. I think they're in the, they're the Raptors now. Um, yeah. But I uh, went in there, and I was there for, like, maybe two weeks and uh, got the call from my agent and said Philly wanted me to sign, to, uh, sign a, deal, a deal with them. And, you know, you jumping right into that. Like, you don't care what the paper says. You just, like, I need this NBA opportunity. And, and that was that. It was like a, one of those uh, – those one year guarantee, but you got the four year option. Yep. You know what I mean? So it was one of those deals. And then it kind of like the, my career kind of was like repetitive after that. Cause you, it was kind of like I was in the D league and the call ups. I got a, well, a bunch of call ups, but it was mostly, it was mostly D league opportunities. Um, I think my, my whole career, I probably got for the NBA, I probably got like what, maybe two official deals. The rest were 10 days and and whatever else come after that. But I mean, 
you know, I feel like a lot of people go through the same type of grind that I had to go through. We all want that uh, NBA, NBA stamp and NBA ideal life, but man, honestly, this Europe and China, you can pretty much live the same type of lifestyle, except for this, just not in America, I believe. So, so talk about, you know, Tuesday is the official day of the start of training camp. Tomorrow's media day. Talk about how it is, you know, being a second round pick and then going into training camp. Cause we got a lot of kids that are, are doing the same thing. They're about to start that journey on Tuesday. How was it, you know, for you, who was on that team, which, you know, I think Zach Levine was on that team when you came in, how was it for you and how was your process and how could someone, you know, how should their mindset be going into the camp? Uh, my advice for the youngest going into the camp process is, I mean, be positive uh, for the most part. I mean, like you said, I came in in that class with a bunch of high-level guys. Zach Levine, I had Andrew Wiggins, uh, Rubio's our point guard. So you kind of want to uh, fall in line of what those guys are doing, like what they're doing after practice, before practice, trying to keep up that whole NBA NBA mentality and being a professional. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I was, I got thrown right in the fire, man. You don't, you come from college and it's a different ball game once you get up in there, man, honestly. Uh, you see it on TV and you think it's sweet. You think it's sweet, but guys can really play. You feel me? So I feel like, I feel like for the young guys that's jumped, that's going into those, you know, and going into these camps, is, be prepared. Don't take it lightly. Uh, and know, know that you're there for a reason. You could be one of those guys as well. But someone like you, you know, you come in a situation where Wiggs is in, shout out Wiggs and Levine, those are homies, um, where you're a scorer too as well. Like if another kid is coming into a situation where they could score the ball in different situations like that, you know, when they get their opportunity, what is a way that they can shine? Do they shy away from their game and do what they're told? Or do you still got to get buckets is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I mean, it, it comes into a point where it's like what the organization wants to see. But then again, I, I tell anybody, play a game. For real, for real. Because, I mean, if you can score, score it. If you uh, – if you – get to the paint, you get assists, do it, do what you do best. Cause at the end of the day, your game is not going to change for somebody else. In my, in my mind on that perspective. Um, but at the same time, you want to find those guys who they shine that light on because that's who they put their money into and put their investments into for real, for real. But I mean, if you, I feel like if you build that trust of within an organization that you can, you can get these guys open as a point guard in my stance. You know, you can get those guys open and also create your own opportunities when it's your time, then that's the way up. And it, and it kind of piggyback of what Zoe said was, um, you know, be professional, all those things, come to camp, do the right things. You know, what's crazy is he was drafted by Minnesota in 2013, and then they ended up waiving you the whole situation, you go to Philly. But then the next season, you eventually go back to Minnesota. Like, kind of talk about that. Like, you kind of have to always leave a good impression, and you never know that you can always go back to a team. But when we're young, you don't think of it like that. When they cut you, wave you, whatever, you probably you off of them, and man, forget right. them. Like, they didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't respect my game. But then you never know that you could go right back, and that's what you did the following season. Most definitely, yeah. So, yeah, what Ray was saying, I got drafted by them, and. It was maybe what two years later that they uh called me back for a ten day because you know I was doing my thing in the D League around the time and um my first game my first game there I had got the call maybe a day before the next day we had a game and they threw me right in the game and I and I played I played against the other Celtics and I uh, I came in I had a had a pretty good game I had like uh, maybe seven or nine points or something like that and. And I believe we won, so because I uh, I think maybe Rubio or Zach got hurt that game, and I had to uh, fill in because we didn't have any of the point guards, or we didn't have many players at the time in Minnesota. Minnesota was like on an up and down type wave, and 
I, they threw me right in the fire, and I, I I played a really good game. So, like you said, like I was saying, be prepared, be ready, and when it's your time to go, be take take advantage of it. Yo, yo, Ray, how like when you know when you guys were coming up together, you know, what do you remember Lorenzo like? You know, most about Lorenzo like coming in, even when y'all battled in camp, and how is that like battling against one of your your homies that you kind of grew up playing with? Is there like, like, I don't know, like, can you talk about a little bit of it? I mean, for me, I mean, well, just knowing that you're going to play against someone, for me, growing up all the time, Joe was way taller than me. Joe was a 6'5 point guard. Six, five, and, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, they, they list me as 6'3", but your boy ain't really 6'3", you know what I mean? <laughs> so, that's the big difference there. Um, And then, you know, Zoe was always a bigger athletic point guard. Um, So, you already know what you're getting this yourself into that but but just playing against him forever i always knew Zoe was always the dog he could score the ball he could pass he could run the team um you know going to detroit situation for me was was iffy because uh Zoe was signed there tell me if i'm wrong they signed you at the end of the season right the year mm-hmm. before or you got signed he got he, he he was with the team before so he was already with the staff he had been there with the summer so when you walk into a situation like that, sometimes for me, I kind of like, okay, well, are they doing a favor to have me in the camp or is it like a legit situation where we can battle oh, for you the spot? Know. You know, you just never, you never really know um, what you're going to get yourself into. Uh, but I mean, it was every day. Like it's, it's crazy. Cause like we cool. So like when we see each other at breakfast in the locker room, you know, on the plane, like we dabbing up, we're chopping it up. But then it's like, in 20 minutes when he blow the whistle, we got right. to it's guard each other. To it, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? And it's like, I hear guys now, like, say, I don't like to train with other pros in the summer because I don't want to have that buddy-buddy relationship on the court. I don't think we ever was buddy-buddy on the court like that. Like, right. but off the court, we was cool. You know what I'm saying? So, and until this day, I mean, I haven't got to play against Zoe in a while because uh, he's been in Europe and then I was in China the years. We just have mixed. We haven't, and he's in the EuroLeague now. I haven't been there in a couple of years, so, um, but it's crazy. Like we, even in the summertime, we'll hoop, open gym, everything, but it's, a, it's the basketball community is very small. For sure. For yep. sure. Yeah. We also did the, uh, the Grand Rapids thing together too. Oh, bro. that's right. That's right. So that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so to back it up. So we had a battle, right? We yeah. had a battle to, for the spot. Okay. Whatever we get way boom. Zoe goes over to China, gets the bag, does his thing in China. Then Zoe comes back that year, and we play together on the, um, in the in the D League. It's still the D League. Yeah, yeah. And so they asked me, they're like, "Hey, are you cool with it?" I'm like, "Yeah, bro, I ain't got no problem. Like me and Zoe was cool." So we came back, we was hooping. Zoe was killing. Was cooking. And, yeah, we we had a nice. <laughs> and then what people don't realize is, um, the Pistons really signed Zoe at the end of the season. But then it was something about enough days. It was, a, right? yo, that was the craziest thing in the world. I had, I was at home. Yeah. And they signed me and I flew, I flew, I had like a, a layover somewhere. And when I touched down, they were like, oh, well, you got to fly back home because uh, it's not enough days or something like that for yeah. the NBA season for you to sign a 10 day. And I was like, well, well, damn. All right. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I see y'all when I see y'all there. Yeah, but what's crazy, even talking about that is talking about like going to training camp with the right attitude, doing your thing. Is you had been with the Pistons like in camp what like once or twice before that, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you had, he had, and then he had been playing with the Grand Rapids Drive, which is the at the time, which is the Pistons D League affiliate team. Yeah. So it's just so much with the league is, you know, building that relationship, being in their system. It's like at some point you it might not work out that year, but years later it worked out. You know sure. what I'm saying? So it's just kind of sure. crazy how that how that whole thing works. Yeah, I, I need sure. you. I, I need y'all to talk about this too because I got drafted into the D League. I need you to tell the difference between the D League and the G League because it's a huge difference. The D League was tough. I can't even lie to you. The D League I was tough. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Straight up. Yeah, like I went to Reno. I'm thinking it's going to be like uh, Las Vegas. It was nothing like that. It was cold. And it's just like, it reminded me of junior college. Everyone was in dog mode. Like I felt like it was kind of like every man for themselves at that at that moment, you know. And But now I'm so glad that the NBA has kind of 
went into the G League route. They putting people in a, uh, better cities, you know, um, more better opportunities for them to succeed. And I'm I'm glad to see that because before, man, it was a grind. I don't need to get really into it, but it was crazy. So how was it for oh, both of y'all? Yeah. Um, with my experience, uh, you know, like you said, it was the it was the D League at first. It wasn't the G League. Uh, so mm. D League, I was when I said I had started off in Massachusetts. Uh, we were practicing at a um, a YMCA. Same here. See, I didn't want to bring that you up. Know? Hey, in fact, <laughs> hey, we were yeah. at the Y too, bro. At the Y, you know, a bunch of old people, and, yeah, and kids running around, but you had to make it make it work. And yeah. I mean. Man, look look where we at now. You know what I mean. But it's all it's all positive. He was getting up at what five in the morning for the flights. I don't know if they're still doing that, but yeah, the five a.m. flights. Um, what else? Just I mean, your, your own tights. You gotta carry your own tights, buy your own stuff. I don't I don't know how the contracts work now, but they were doing the A, B, and C, yeah, type contracts yep. back then. Yep, and think maybe the what was the C the highest or the A the highest? One of those like that. Pretty, but it wasn't. A I'm pretty sure was the highest, if I'm not a. mistaken. It was yeah. A is the a highest. Was the C highest. was yeah, C was the lowest. It was like you were working a nine to five for real. Like that's how the that's yeah. how the numbers came out. But I'm glad they have like the two ways now so these these young guys can make a little bit more money. And speaking about the two way, uh I don't know if you know this but you and Quinn Cook were the first two guys with NBA experience to sign the, the two way. If I'm, a, if I'm, yeah, man. Shout out, shout out, Quinn Cook too, man. He, yeah. he definitely uh, did the same type of grind we both did. Exactly, and and it worked out. And and talk about that that year. I think it was 2018 mm -hmm. uh, that you did it. And is that the year you won the MVP? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you won yeah, the MVP, but... which then. That two way got converted into a standard contract. I'm pretty sure, right? From the Raptors. for sure, yeah, the next year. And so that's, and that's what we kind of want. So you are somebody who's used the D League, in your career, your early on in your career, that helped you springboard you to an NBA contract or you're on the NBA team. Um, now it's different. Now you can't go to training camp. You can't go to camp and earn a spot necessarily. They do this thing called Exhibit Ten, which they sign like five guys where if you sign up for an exhibit 10, it's like if, if you get waived then you have to go spend like 60 days in the G League to get the mm -hmm. salary or something crazy like that. But just kind of talk about, you know, the year before, I think you did the two way, you might have went to China and then you yeah. come back, you get the two way, you get the, the, the MVP of the D League, you get the standard contract, everything the next year, I think you get waived in like December, January. Yeah, like it was like, yeah, January, February. Yeah, so kind of talk about away. that. It's like, okay, for what, four years now, I done showed you I could play. I've been a D League All Star. I done helped my D League team win. I done got called up. I've been on what, three, four NBA teams now. Like, what mm -hmm. more do y'all? I'm, I'm, the, I'm the MVP. Like, what more can I show you guys? What more do you need to see? Like, what is that? Right. What is that like? I feel like that's the tough part right there too, man, because in your mind, well, the numbers show that you're producing, especially in the when you're doing you you're doing do your thing in the G League and you're going down there and you're killing and you come back up and it's still no play for you. You know what I'm saying? You still have to wait your turn and as they say, be be ready. Um, but I think people don't know I was doing the two way thing before the two way was a two way man. I was in when I was in Philly my first year, I would go down to Delaware, then come back for an NBA game and you know keep doing the same thing back and forth. But the year I did it with uh, Toronto man, it was it was honestly a blessing man because I had an opportunity to be coached by Jerry Stackhouse, one of the NBA uh, greats, uh, and he put the ball in my hand man, and that was. I was like, a, that was just a blessing for me because I really got to showcase what I could, you know what I'm saying, do as a point guard. Um, I had some uh, some great players on that team, man. Alfonso McKinney, uh, Malcolm Miller. Um, Kennedy Meeks also was on that team. And uh, we made it to the, the G League Finals. And that pretty much, I feel like that stamped it for me for the next season. 
and also winning the MVP that definitely stamped it as well. So, I mean, that got to gave Toronto a chance to see what I could do and also see my professionalism as a player um, just by going back and forth and maintaining a upbeat attitude and, you know, just, you know, just, like I said, just being a professional, man. And that's what it's about at the end of the day, especially if you wanted some, it's a long lasting career. Um, but it's tough though, man. Uh, that grind is it's a little different. Um, but I just tell guys to keep, keep the focus, man. You don't, you, like you say, you never know where you're going to end up. That same team that you got away from would probably call you back in a year or so. You get that deal with them. So, like I said, it's all a grind and, and patience. And to, and to kind of add on to that, you know, during that whole process when So has an NBA resume, um, he's had success in the league, and now he's the 2018 G League MVP. People don't realize this whole time, your agent's probably hitting you up with, you know, large lucrative contracts overseas. You got China, you got teams in Europe you know, trying to give you more money than you probably essentially could have been making that time when you're in the B League mm -hmm. or the G League or the NBA. How do you balance the two? Like, nah, I'm an NBA player. I'm going to stick this out and show everybody I'm going to earn this spot. Or, like, how do you balance that? Like, man, that's a lot of money. Should I go and do it? Like, what, right. what is that like for you when you were at that time for you then? Before, so, before uh, you made the jump. Before you made the jump. Before I made the jump. So, yeah. I mean – Mentally, it's tough because you always grow up and you hear NBA, NBA, NBA. You don't know anything about China, nor do you know anything about Europe. And um, as a young guy, you believe you just you just want that NBA stamp. You want to be one of those guys making those making those M's for real, you know. So, but not realizing that guys are making M's over here. You feel me? So, and I. I just think that that's where my uh, whole mental was just to be a NBA, NBA player. But that's one thing I kind of do uh, kind of regret on is not making that jump earlier because, you know, when you, when you first cross the cross over to Europe, you don't get that, you don't get that respect firsthand. They still see you as a, a G league guy or, you know, just a, an American player because the game is so different over here. I think I think of it as a, a a better version of college. You know, guys are stronger, smarter. You feel me? Um, and you just gotta adjust. And you know, um, luckily I I came in and adapted pretty fast. Uh, just because I had another set of good players on my team when I was in Red Star my first year. Uh, I had Kevin Punter, James Gist, you know what I'm saying? Like, those are some some high-level names right <laughs> there. And they, you know what I'm saying, yeah, they put me in a position to be successful as well. So you always got to, I feel like you always got to thank the people that surround you too. James Gist is a, a legend, bro, overseas, man. Legend. Oh, my legend. goodness, bro. And then he was on Red Star. He had, That was his first year going to a different team, huh, when you was there? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he he was at Partizan for it when he first came. Yeah, he, and that's he what was. the big issue was. Oh Red yeah, Star at Partizan. Like, bro, yeah, it's kind of what KP yeah. did too. You know Ooh what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's it was it was a little hectic at first, but I didn't understand until I you know what I'm saying until I got involved a little more because they take that they take that serious. That's like life that's, or death for yeah. them. That game right, right there, sure. you, you can win all the games of the season. You lose that oh, one man, game, you lose that. They, they on <laughs> your they on your head for a minute. Yeah. They on your head for right. a minute, but that's the fun of it, though. Like they got the whole fan base. They throwing stuff at you, but it get, it get a little it get a little scary when they get to throwing stuff. But you know they control it a little bit, and you know you get back to hooping. But I mean, like I said, man, it, the whole the whole process is just making a name for yourself out here. And I feel like once you do that and show these people that, that you can, that you can play, play in this game, man, it's, it's, it's all basketball, but it's about if you got the talent or not. Yeah. And see, and see before, before you go to Europe, uh, Zoe goes to China and you do China twice. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so the good thing about China is, not only the contract, but it allows you to have the opportunity to 
be in China, getting paid, and then you come back and finish in the NBA. In the NBA. Right, right. And that, and that essentially worked for you the both times you did it, correct? You went to China yeah. and you came back, and then one time you, 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 the year that you get, you're in Toronto, then you're there half a year, then you, from there you go to China, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, that was the last time, right? So then China's cool. Thing with Europe is you're there the whole 10 months, right? You, you pretty Thanks. much, you stuck. So, so you do China twice, you have success. And then now you got Red Star. And probably, you probably don't really know too much about the Euro League. You don't really know much about Europe. Luca probably comes over to the NBA now. That's his rookie year, second year around that time. Like, for those who don't know, Red Star is one of the best teams in Europe from just a fan base, everything. So I'm sure mm-hmm. they're blowing up your Instagram, everything. You're probably looking at your phone like, what is this? Come to Red Star, all this. You don't, you don't know. Like, right, right, right. Yeah, how was that that summer? Were you pretty set on like, okay, China was cool, but you know, China's got too much contracts now. Like, at least I can go lock in and rest. Like, what was that like whole process of determining like, okay, maybe I'm gonna put the league stuff aside. I'm gonna make the jump. I'm gonna go to either China or or your or your league. How was that for you? Uh, yeah, it was it was a difficult decision, man. Cause you know, I feel like uh. The 10 months thing is probably the most difficult thing for a player. You know what I mean? Because uh, you know that time is probably the most precious thing in the world because you never get that back, man. So you're out here for 10 months. You're not seeing your fam. You're not, you're not like, you know, you can't do the things you normally do. And, and you always want to make that NBA jump still. But uh, with the whole China thing, it was six, it's a six month six month job. Uh, like you said, you get to come back, maybe do the G League, or maybe you get the opportunity to be on the NBA team. So that was just the plus about being on the Chinese uh, deals. But my agent was pretty much just telling me, man, it's you know you getting getting a little. I'm getting a little older. At the time, I was uh 27, 28 years old, and um, I was like, you get a little older, man. It's time to go make some some real money, some real deal money, and and I just ran with it. I mean, I wasn't, he said it was, you know, rest, I was Euro league or it's still Euro league. They were Euro league. And it's the, it's the next step after the NBA. And I was just like, I mean, let's go for it, man. He was explaining, he tried to explain everything to me as far as like fan base and how everything works in Europe. But I didn't understand it. You know, I didn't know how hard the people went for their teams out here. Cause they don't they don't play no games, man. When they come there to their uh, to their team, but once I got in, it was just like you said. It was the messages, "Welcome to Red Star." Uh, we love you. We we can't. We glad that you're here. Blaje Blaje. It was just it was just so much love, man. It and it, it was just so unexpected. I just I caught a grasp to it and and held on, man. So it was amazing. It was an amazing experience for my first time in Europe and. Well, that was two years ago, and I, I really I didn't get to stay the whole time because that's when uh COVID hit. So, yeah, yeah, COVID hit that year. We all, you know, went back to the crib, little quick little break for us. But, well, you know, how that COVID stuff go. But it was, you know, unexpected. But I still had an amazing time, man. Uh, Serbia was a, a great country. Um, like I said, the fan base was probably top tier. Uh, they it's like a college arena it's like it's like college not a college arena but it's like college man when you come to the fan base you have a chance you know what i'm saying they got the songs they jumping up and down they do everything and and their willpower to help you win so so it's a good experience it's like college it's like college but people were scared coming into your spots bro man Man. People were scared coming into oh, Red hey, Star. They got, the, they got the police out there. Yeah, yeah the SWAT team with the shields. And I'm like, bro, what is this? Yeah, it's like war. It's yeah. like a, it's like a, it's a it's a battle for real. And then you go to that. See, see, Zoe's had a great path in terms of Europe and Euroleague with the fan base. You go from that, which honestly is crazy too, because you got to talk about this. So you go from Red Star to Fenerbahce. Now Fenerbahce is, mm-hmm. you know. You have, they probably have the biggest fan base in all of Europe. They probably have more followers on social media than a lot of NBA teams. Um, Now you go to Fenerbahce in Turkey. From a fan perspective, like as a hooper, these are teams where 
if you have a bad game, if your team's losing, I promise you, you can't even get on your phone. <laughs> you don't want to get on Instagram. You want to get on Twitter. Like, Straight up. If, if this is your first two experience, like, how how is that? Like, dealing with that, it's like, man. Man, it's a, it's very different, man. Uh, like I said before, them they don't play about their teams. You know, what I mean, I can't really go into detail what those uh what those messages are like, but <laughs> he he won't. But I will. I mean, it's, it's nah, a, I know, I know. Death, my my pops played it finish. I already know. <laughs> death threats, you name it, racist. Oh racist man, you getting everything. And it, you getting and it, everything, and, it, and it's tough. And even last year, they really couldn't even come to the games, right? Because of COVID. Yeah, no, nah, we we didn't have we didn't have a fan. I mean, which it kind of it kind of sucked, and it. Oh, because you didn't get the it experience. Kinda, the, the I didn't get the experience uh, the fan base like that. I just got I just got the messages. You know what I mean? I, I didn't get the good side of them, but uh, I got you know we had a couple of games where they invited you know what I'm saying a certain select few of people out there, but I never got the uh, the real like the real Fenner experience. But um, last year, man, my teammates were great. You know, I had opportunity to play with some great players, uh, Nano Decola, uh, Jan Vesely, you know, uh, those two guys who also played in the NBA that are Europeans as well. So, I mean, yeah, like, I've been blessed to be around some great players, man, especially in my career, especially in Toronto. And and I did a couple of 10 days in uh, Phoenix as well with uh, D-Book. Uh, you know, I got to got to see a, a lot of guys do their things, man, and develop as players. So, man, it's been a, an amazing experience so far. When when you go into a team and you have like a legend, like you know, a James Gish, you know, I never really got a chance to ask an overseas player this question, but what what are some of the advice that they give you? You know, what I'm saying like moving on to a team like that. You know, James Gish is is like we all we just said it. He's a legend, but you know, he's one of the most respected. Bigs probably in Euroleague history up there with Kyle Hines. Um, mm-hmm. What kind of what kind of advice did he give you when you first went in? Man, he just he always told me it gets better. You know what I mean? Uh, Red Stars, Red Star is a great program. It's a great club and all of that. But uh, you have these teams over here that are just like NBA teams. You know what I mean? So and he got to experience that by playing at uh, Panathinaikos, which is one of the top tier teams, and they put a lot of money into their club. And um, you know, it, it, like I like I said, uh, he just always told me it gets better. It's just do your thing. The most you can do is just worry about yourself and and do your thing out here, man. And I and I took that to heart for sure. So meaning it gets better, just for those that don't. I, I I get it. It means that like, you know, you're gonna have your ups and downs, but it's always gonna get better on the on the other other end the other end of the stick, basically. Meaning like it's gonna be them the, a lot of highs too as well, not just the lows in terms of right. this overseas game. Cause that was my biggest thing. When I came in, I wasn't in the same luxury. I always bring this up, but you know, when when we lost, I would be scared to get sent home the next day, to be real with you. You know, that's how I was mm-hmm. in all eight different teams because when you first deal with it the first time you always fearful of of that happening so when you said that it kind of hit home because it does get better because you're gonna have them them lights for sure with overseas um but now you know you you're on unix you know you're currently are you in russia currently right now or no it looks like it right now you got the chandelier in the background (laughs) so i i I figured you was at the crib (laughs) (laughs) yeah like, sure. but how has it been, you know, with this team? Because now you're kind of in a different situation. I, I'm I'm looking at Unix. Unix is making a lot more different moves than they usually have. A lot of NBA guys, you, you know, you got Mario Hazonia on your team. You guys also just signed OJ Mayo. You know, Isaiah how Cannon. Isaiah Cannon, Isaiah too. Cannon, yeah. yeah, like that's yeah. a that's an NBA roster right there. So, you know, how what's the difference between you know, this team and others, and how has it been for you? You know, you just had a big game. You got highlighted on Swish. How has it been for you appreciate so far? It, appreciate yep. it. Yep. Yeah, man, it's been amazing, man. Like, it's still like it's still going, man. I'm still counting these blessings every day, man. I, like you said, I got these – I got some big-time NBA players on my team coming in. Uh, coming in here as well, uh, OJ Mayo just signed as well. And, um, you know, we're just trying to put it together, put these pieces together. Um, 
you know, we have uh, some talented guys. Uh, also, John Brown, he won uh, Defensive Player of the Year last year in the BTB League. And the threat threat on defense, man. Um, you know, it's just it's just a continuous, continuous cycle, man. Just trying to keep this success going. Um, still got things to prove. You know what I mean? That's the, I feel like that's my goal every year, to prove that I belong. You know what I mean? And, I mean, which I know I do, but I feel like, it's still, you know, a little skepti- skepticism about that because it's my third year in, my third year playing EuroLeague, and I feel like they want to see a little bit more. That's what that's just in my mind. They want to see a little bit more, so I'm gonna give them a little bit more each each year. So that's just my goal. And and with that, talk about people don't realize how hard it is one to play in Europe to be there for ten months and hooping overseas. And especially mm-hmm. someone like you who's coming from the league, there's a lot of guys who have a similar resume and they're not even hooping anymore or they're not playing like that. You know, like, and not only that, to be in EuroLeague for three years, like, talk about how hard it is to just keep that role, keep that being EuroLeague, being Europe in general. Like, explain how hard that is for people. It's not, it's not easy making that jump. Yeah, man, it's tough because, like you said, I got another guy that came up with us, Isaiah Cannon. You know, he went through the same grind. He was in the league. He did China, you know, and he's in the same place I I am now. And and it's just like you don't realize you run into these same guys that's that's, that's done the same thing as you. Uh, Like they always say, the last dude on the NBA roster – would still bust your ass, you know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Um, you know what I'm saying? We and we we run out, we run into those guys in Europe, and they make a a, a good name for themselves out here, man. And you know, uh, I mean, like I said, I like I said before, the only issue that anybody would probably have is just the ten months thing. If you can get past that mentally, because there's going to be some stress involved with that mentally. Uh, but other than that, you can get past that. I feel like the season would be a breeze, man, because you have these guys who, like I said, they've done the same thing as you, so they can relate. And, you know what I'm saying, y'all can reminisce, do whatever, but at the end of the day, we are here to do a job. You know what I mean? So if you get that understood and out the way, then I feel like things will fly by. No, for sure. Also, because those been in some good cities, been with some good teams, and and when you're in your your league, the path you know in, in Europe is a little bit different. So that's a blessing that you you know got to go this route. You know, mm-hmm. so. appreciate it, yes, sir. But yeah, man, that's that's big time, bro. Man. So I got I got to ask you some hidden gems questions. Um, okay. One of, one of the biggest ones is you know since you've played you've played in several different leagues, for a player to come in overseas and take care of their body, because that's one of the biggest deals, you know, is taking care of your body. What's some advice that you would give to someone in terms of playing overseas and taking care of their body, what they need to do? Man, invest your money into normal tech, uh, a game ready, you know what I mean? Just put that money somewhere that you can invest in to take care of yourself, man, because sometimes the teams don't have what you need, you know what I mean? They have the trainers and all that, but you need that ice. You need you need those massages. You need all you need all that. So it's a long season. Nah, that's the truth. It's funny you said I asked that purposely because I got a Norma Tech upstairs. I learned that late. Uh, yeah. <laughs> after yes, an injury, yes, I got one. <laughs> after injury, I'm like, oh, hold yeah. on, bro. I need to go get a Norma Tech. Yeah, so I put that money aside. Two days and all that, man. Yeah, yeah. Go need it. Yeah, how 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 was that? You know, going into your first two a day, because did you have a Serbian coach with at Red Star? Was he Serbian or no? Uh, yeah, my well, we had uh three coaches that year, man. Uh, our first coach he was Serbian, I think he was Serbian, but he quit after like the third game because uh I don't know why, but we lost we lost to uh, you know what I'm saying not not a good team. It wasn't a good team, but we lost to him. He just came in the locker room one day and was. He was just talking about something. I couldn't really understand him. And then he was just like, I quit. I quit. And we were just looking like, <laughs> like what? You know what I'm saying? It, it, was, it was a crazy, like, it was crazy experience. Yeah, he quit. He wasn't even there the next day. So it was wild. But, you know, just 
jumped to two more coaches and you no, know, no, it was, it was strange. But the two of day thing, man, they, 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 it's the real out here. Nah, because nah, I bring that up because I always heard it until I had one. People are like, bro, you got to beware of Serbian coaches. It's going to be a tough grind. Oh, you're going you're gonna to grind out oh, all man. practices. It's going to be worse than the games when you have a Serbian coach when it comes to the work. Because the work is going to be crazy. They making you put that work in. Running, uh, weights, basketball, you doing all of that about a week straight. But, I mean, they got elk, they got elk out here now to uh, the European uh, Basketball Players Association thing. So, <laughs> they done, you know. Yeah. They did us. A, they did us a solid right there with that one. Yeah. Shout yeah. How, to too, man. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah. How, how is it? How has it been with them? You know, because I remember when it first started. I haven't really followed up with how it's been for you guys. You know, with Elpa now. Uh, what are some things that they've done for you guys since you've been there? Man, it, it's it's been nothing but love, man. They protecting us, pretty much. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it, it's it's about us and about our our health and mental health and anything that involves our body, man, to tell you the truth. Um, so I pretty much, they done made some rules to cut down on the two a days and, you know, and things like things in that. Such. So, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's just our, for our protection, man. So it, uh, they, they doing, they doing their thing with that one. I appreciate them for sure. Yeah. Ray, you got something for us? Man, the only thing I could say is, Expect the unexpected out there in Europe. You never know what it is. Sure. Like Zoe just sure. said, he had three coaches. After the third game, you know, he might have signed to play for this coach, and then thir- three games in, he leaves. Now you got a new guy coming in with a whole new system. You just never you just never know what mm-hmm. to expect. And like he said, what James Gist told you is you got to take care of yourself, you know, play well, do your thing. Because, and like Jordan, like you said, you felt every time you lost that they might try to get rid of you. So that's that's the biggest thing. You got to. Thanks. You know, be a good teammate, do your part, and try to help your team win, and, and everything else will work itself out. But expect the unexpected, man. Yep. And last question, this is for both of you guys. Um, you guys talked about it earlier, and it kind of resonated with me uh, about your personality and your, you know, your, you know, you as a person, how that takes you a long way. You know, you you were on Minnesota, you go back to Minnesota because of the type of character you had, and they knew what to expect from you. How does that transition all the way to overseas? Because it seems like this basketball world is so small. I don't think people realize how small it is. So how do you feel like your character follows you with every place that you've been to? Mm-hmm. Man, word travels, man. Um, especially when these teams are trying to invest some money into you, they're going to do their research about you. Um, they don't want a guy coming in with, you know what I'm saying? Nose in the air, thinking he's above everybody. They don't get rid of you just like that once they figure that out about you. Um, I mean, when, when I came in my first year, they, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they knew I was like hardworking. They knew, you know what I'm saying? They knew I was a quiet guy, but at the end of the day, they wanted, they wanted me to, you know what I'm saying? Be more vocal and be, and be more of a team oriented guy, which, you know what I'm saying? I, I have that, but it was just difficult because the guys that I had on the team really didn't speak that good English. So it was kind of like a difficult situation, just pointing and, but that still, that, that, that shows that you have that good character and they can depend on you when certain things hit the fan. All right. You got to talk about yours too, bro. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I think that to this day when um, my agent will call and about a team, they'll call another team I played for in Europe or they'll, they'll talk, they'll ask around, like, like what, what Zoe said, word, word travels fast. They're going to get the background information on you in a second. I mean, with, with the NBA stuff, I mean, they're going to call the trainer. They're going to call the equipment manager to see how you treated the equipment manager. It's the littlest things like, how you present yourself, so much of it nowadays is guys get signed to these jobs. Some of them are getting signed not even based off of the production that they do on the court, just how, what type of guy they are in the locker room, what kind of teammate they are. And I think just obviously you got to hoop and do your part, but the little things off the court matter as well. And I think with the game being so global now, even in China, all the different Chinese teams, they talk to the team you're on. Like 
your image and how you're portrayed, it, it, it holds a lot of weight. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate you, Zoe, for taking the time, man. A lot of people need to realize my man is nine hours ahead right now. It's what, about to be 10? It's 10 o'clock, 10.57? Yep, no, nah, it's 11 right now. It's about to be 12. Dang. Oh, my bad, bro. Right. No, 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 it's all good, man. I took about three naps already. <laughs> oh. Big naps, <laughs> big naps. Feed the day up over there. Thanks. What, straight what, up. <laughs> what's, what's been, the last thing I'm going to leave you off with, what's been the biggest thing that you've been doing with your time as of late, you know? Man, just pretty much just trying to work on my brand itself, man. Uh, Trying to put together mm -hmm. some. Some, some logos, trying to do some camps, do be more involved in the community back home, which is, you know what I'm saying, it's tough, but you got to find ways to deal with your, do your, deal with your time out here. Yeah. Do you got anything that you, on. that you want to promote that you got going on? Uh, not as a yet, yet, not as a yet, man, but I do want to promote my guy, Key the Trainer, man. That's my guy right there, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, man. Anyway. Shout out Key, bro. Yeah, you already yeah. know we're going to put yeah. that up. Nah, yeah, that's my guy, man. He's a real solid dude, man. He's a great trainer, man. Great person. So, you know, anybody in Atlanta go holler at that, man. Man, that's a that's yeah. a good that's that's good right there. And you know, Key, he coming up in the game. He's been around for a minute. You know, he's worked with Lonzo. He's worked with Lorenzo. Lonzo and Lorenzo, Ryan. <laughs> and then uh he's doing a lot of stuff with Ant Man. You know, also he has uh Jordan, Jordan McCray. McCray. Yeah, yeah, down there McCray. too. Jay yeah, man. so you know, shout out to Key, man. You're doing his thing. And most importantly, a good dude, too. So if you in the ATL, man, make sure you guys go out there and, and uh, link up with him because he got some good work. Oh, most yes, definitely. sir. Ray, what you got? Man, that's Sign perfect, us out. Man. Zoe, you, 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 uh, you hit us with some great knowledge. Appreciate you coming on. Good luck to you. We'll be following you. They start the EuroLeague, what, Thursday? Is y'all's first game? Thursday. Thursday Friday? Uh, yep, yep, yep. Thursday. Thursday. I will play Friday against Friday? Zenit. Okay. So the battle, yeah, yeah. battle, little battle of Russia. Russia. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Well, no, I thanks. appreciate y'all, boys, man. Yes, I appreciate you, Doc. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, brother. So, hey, good yeah, luck, bro. All right, yeah, man. Thank you, man. You too. Yes, sir. All right, bro.